Hello everyone, welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in this video, we're going to be covering various workflows for assigning shades to your model, including specific types of shades like louvers or extruded borders, and even shades constructed from detailed existing geometry. So, you guys will notice that just like the windows that we spent our previous tutorial covering, there is a subsection of this Create tab under the Honeybee tab in Grasshopper that allows us to assign shades to our models using a few different methods. Some of these methods are more sort of quick and dirty than others. For example, there is a component called HP Louver Shades, which I'm going to drag and drop onto the canvas right now, which functions very similar to the way that the apertures by ratio component functions in that it'll, it allows you to take Honeybee objects as input along with the shade depth, and it will give you out edited Honeybee objects. And just to illustrate how this component works, I'm going to make a little space here and I'm going to move these visualization components over. And if I simply plug my room that has our windows assigned to it into this louver shades component and I plug in a depth, let's say we'll, we'll use a slider for this again. Let's say we make a slider going from uh, 0 0.1 all the way up to maybe a full meter. Uh, and the way that I did that was just by typing 0 0.1 less than 1 and then hitting enter. And that'll give me a slider with this uh, with the, this range of values. And if I plug in that depth here, you'll notice we get a, an edited room out of this. And we can preview this room just like what we did with our, our aperture by ratio workflows. And see that we are able to assign an overhang of a varying depth using this component. Now, you'll see that this is just an overhang or an awning, and we can change things like the angle. Let's say if we want to change the angle from, you know, up to, let's say, 30 degrees, I can plug in an angle here uh, and lower those to make them a bit more like an awning. Uh, or let's say I could, uh, I, let's say I want to do more of a louver strategy rather than uh, one deep overhang. So I'll shorten these a little bit, and I will add a shade count of, let's say, uh, Let's make a slider going from 0 to uh, 10, maybe at most. And if I plug in a value for that, you'll see that I can create various numbers of movers across the windows using that, that simple shade cap. Now, there are also ways of generating, generating shades using distance between. Let's say maybe we only want two shades per each, but we want them spaced at a value of... Uh, why don't we say 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters? So to do that, maybe instead of using a slider like I've been using here, I can just pull up a panel. And there's a nifty shortcut for putting stuff into a panel as well, which is just to double click on the canvas and type double quotation marks. And then you can, after that, type whatever you would like to be inside of that, uh, that panel. So in this case, if I want to say 0.2 as the distance between the louvers, I can just hit enter. And that'll give me a panel with 0 0.2 inside of it, which I can then plug into my distance between in order to specify that distance. And you'll see, right, it will still respect the shade count, but it will be adding, it'll ensure that that spacing, that distance between is respected as it generates these. So already you can get a decent sense of how you can easily generate uh, different types of shade strategies using this component. Again, I should say that much like the apertures by ratio, this is not ultimately what we're going to be using to define the shades of our of our single family house here. But I want you to be aware of it because it is, again, one of those components that's very useful in early design when you're trying out various different types of shading strategies. And I'll also importantly note that the different properties that you have on this liver shades component can function exactly like the, the apertures by ratio component. And by that, I mean that you can assign different depths or different number of shades depending upon the orientation simply by using this HP facade parameters component. And let's say that we can uh, add a different depth on east and west uh, than we would on north and south. And practically all of the, whoops, let's see, north and south, uh, practically all of the uh, the inputs of this louver shades component function like this. So that you can, let's say, put a deeper overhang, uh, in this case on the south, than on the east and west. Probably it would make sense to do something uh, instead of that, something maybe like this, right, where we use deeper overhangs on the east and west. So again, you can really customize a lot with this louver shades component. But 
As I mentioned, this is not ultimately what we're going to use. So I'm going to go and select all these facade parameters, these mover shades and these sliders, and just delete them. And we're actually going to use this other component to help generate what is much closer to uh, what actually exists in this single family home. I'm going to drag and drop this HB extruded border shades onto the canvas. And so this is another way of auto generating shades from the window geometries. But what's nice about this is that it's useful in, in helping account for the thickness of walls or the fact that windows are oftentimes recessed a little bit from the, the wall that they are a part of. Uh, and this component then allows us to account for the, the shade benefit that happens because of that recessing of the windows. So in our case, I'm going to use this just like I did the louver shades component where I'm going to take our honeybee rooms here and, and plug them into this component. Uh, but you'll see I also need to assign a depth in order to be able to actually have this component run. And in this case, we can use a slider simply for this. Let's see, I will do something from 0 to 0 0.5 and then hit enter. And if I plug in this value for the depth, well, you see a depth of 0 clearly doesn't do anything. But let's say that we uh, make this, this 10 centimeters deep. And you'll see now we're able to get a room out of this component, an edited room. And uh, we can preview this using our visualize by type, and we can actually see what these extruded border shades look like. So we can use these to account for the fact that the walls are a little bit thick, I know, on this on the single family home. Maybe, I mean, they're not quite that thick for sure, uh, because it is still like a pretty modern construction. But maybe something like 0 0.2 like this uh, is actually pretty close to what, what exists in reality and will allow us to account for the shading that happens from having these windows recessed. So all right, we've already seen there's one way that we can generate shades like this. Uh, but as you guys could probably guess what is coming, there's also a way of assigning detailed geometry um, as shades to our models. Uh, and that's what this, this last component under the shade section of the Create tab here is for. There's a component that's simply called HB Shade. And if I drag and drop this onto the canvas, this will allow us to take geometry as an input, shade geometry as an input, and it will output shade objects that have properties that are suitable for an energy simulation, which we can then assign to our under other Honeybee objects. So again, this is a very similar workflow for what we did with our apertures. Uh, the only thing that you guys will see might be different is, is what we ultimately assign these shades to. But all right, I'm going to go back over to Rhino here for a second. And you'll see that if I go back to the layers that I turned off on the, in the beginning, there is actually a layer for existing shade, which includes things like this attic that is shading the kind of the direct roof surface. Uh, we also have things like this overhang on the back here, which uh, kind of makes this nice back porch in my mother-in-law's house. And we have a little garage here uh, to the side. So it'd be nice if we can incorporate all of these as detailed shade elements in our model. So I'm going to go, I'm going to select, I'm going to hold down shift and select all three of these shade elements. And I'm going to go over to Grasshopper and I'm going to bring in these geometries just like I did for our windows, just like I did for our room solid. So I'll do that by double clicking on the canvas, bringing up a native Grasshopper geometry parameter. And then I'll right click on that geometry parameter and we'll say set multiple geometries. And you'll see, just like all the other geometry we brought in, that will turn red or green, depending upon whether I have it selected. I don't want a lot of stuff previewing on top of each other, so I'm just going to right-click and turn the preview off on this geometry parameter for now. Uh, and along with that, I'm going to turn the preview off also on the Rhino scene here, so that I can focus more uh, intently on what I have within Grasshopper. And let me bring my nice panel over here. I'll move that out of the way. Okay. And we can see right out of this component, we're getting three reference B-reps for that garage and the roof and the, and the back porch overhang. And if I go and connect up these geometries to our HB shade component, you should see that out of this component, we are now getting a list of shade objects. And you'll notice that it's not exactly the same. There aren't th perfectly three objects like what we have here. And that's because each individual shade object is its own sort of planar surface. 
And if you remember what these geometries look like, if I turn the preview back on for a second, that each of these reference B reps actually have multiple faces that make them up. So that's why we have a total of, looks like nine shade objects here, uh, as opposed to just the three that we started with. But let me turn the preview off here. I'm going to right click and say preview again. And let's see, and we can also take a look at what these shade geometries actually look like in our visualized by type. Again, these are honeybee objects, just like rooms, just like apertures. And if we plug them into our visualized by type, we can actually see what they look like on their own right here in, in, the, in Grasshopper. Uh, but importantly, we want to join all of this together into one, uh, one sort of cohesive set that includes both our rooms and our shades. And there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, it kind of comes down a little bit to preference. There is a component here that allows you to add shade to parent objects. Uh, and this allows you to assign shade specifically to like just one room or just one aperture. Uh, but there's also a more general way that we can assign, especially shade that is essentially covering the whole building like this. Uh, and that is when we go to join all of this, all of these honeybee objects into a singular model. And uh, I'm going to make Grasshopper big here for a little bit, just so that I can explain this a little bit more. But you'll see all the way on the left side of the Create tab, there is a comp component called HB Model. And if I drag and drop this onto the canvas, you'll see that this is kind of the component that brings it all together that essentially makes a singular object that has all the rooms that, we're, that we want to study in our model. It has all the shade objects that we want to study. Uh, and it can optionally also have things like faces or, or apertures or doors that aren't necessarily linked to a parent room. Now, when we're building an energy model, everything that we plug into this component should either be uh, under the room section or it should be under the shade section. Uh, because these other, I guess what we call orphaned faces or orphaned apertures, ones that don't have a parent room assigned to them, uh, they, they are usually just going to be modeled within Energy Plus as, as simply as context shade, not as actual real rooms that have a thermal behavior to them. So all right, so I'm going to bring this all together, though. I'm going to connect up my room here, right, that has both the apertures and the shades assigned to that. We'll connect that up to the rooms. And then I'm going to connect up my shades to the shades input here. And out of this, I'm going to get a model object that's just called unnamed because I didn't, I didn't assign a name to it, but that's okay. And this is a singular object that has all of the definition of these rooms, all the definition of the shades, all in a single object. And I can plug this model object into this visualize by type. And I'm just going to make sure that you guys can see what happens in Grasshopper. So when I plug this into the visualize by type, You'll see this includes everything that we want, all the geometry we want to model in our simulation. We have our room that has walls, roofs, and floors assigned to it. Uh, it also has apertures, and those apertures have extruded borders that account for the depth of the wall. And then lastly, it has these kind of context shades that we're modeling here uh, that include the garage and the roof and, the, and this back porch overhang. So Basically, this model is all set to go. It, it can be simulated in Energy Plus. It has all the geometry that we are interested in. And you guys have gotten a sense for the different ways that you can assign shades using the Honeybee components here. Uh, but I will say, before we go and simulate, there are still a few more things that we want to check in our model before we go hit that button and, uh, and send it off to Energy Plus to simulate it. And so we're going to spend the next few videos understanding a few of the more deeper uh, attributes that have been assigned when we did things like creating these rooms. But I promise you, it won't be more than a, than a few videos until we, we finally hit that simulate button. So thank you guys for joining in this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.